What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It is Ash Josh Season and today as you can see in front of us we are on something a little bit different. Today we are on the BMW C Evolution all electric scooter. Anyways, I'm excited to bring you guys a full review of this scooter that BMW first released in 2014. This is the 2017 version. We're going to get into all of it right after this. All right, guys. Well, welcome back to the channel. As I said, today we are on the BMW C Evolution all-electric scooter. This scooter is actually from 2017. BMW first released this scooter in 2014 for a, I think the 2017 version went for a whopping MSRP of $14,900. So this model has since been discontinued for the kind of release of BMW's more modern all-electric scooter that they have launched called the CEO4. But today we are on the 2017 version and wanted to take this around Special shout out to the guys at Irv Sieber BMW for letting us take the scooter for the last couple days. This thing has been a trip, been a lot of fun. Uh, excited to bring you guys kind of my thoughts of what I think about the scooter. The pros, the cons, being able to look back on what scooter all-electric technology was in 2017 and maybe where it's come from today. We're going to get into the pros, the cons, what I think about the all-electric market and especially because we live here in sunny Southern California where it looks like that's the trend that more and more things are going electric. So let's get into this. All right, here we have it. The BMW C Evolution with bright neon green um, has some rear suspension on here. And this thing is kind of a step through thing. So craziest part about this, um, not the craziest, there's a lot of crazy stuff about this, but parking brake is basically when the kickstand is down you can't move the bike scooter i'm gonna end up calling this thing a bike uh for this video if you guys are super offended by that let me know down in the comments it's just going to be a habit because normally we are on motorcycles so i don't know is this a bike or is it not it's a great question so we're going to throw the kickstand up this thing does have a reverse gear obviously don't need to go into reverse and we are going to turn this on <laughs> no engine noise guys this is all electric so let's get right into this here we go definitely has the electric sound to it well all right guys we're gonna start off with some specs of this 2017 BMW C Evolution all electric scooter honestly I'm not super up to date on a lot of the electric stuff on here so you guys that if you're watching this video chances are you probably have some electric motorcycle electric car or at least probably have more knowledge of electric vehicles than I do so bear with me on this as a fellow petroleum loving internal combustion engine fan um, I am pretty unfamiliar with the electric world so the one thing that I can say is at least on slow speeds this thing does have a decent amount of torque it feels like it just kind of gets up and goes which is surprising so we'll start off with the question that I know is most common amongst people looking at electric scooters and electric vehicles is what is the range um, this bike scooter whatever I said I was gonna call it a bike I don't know if it's a bike yet hmm okay so anyways this thing when i started had a full battery and it was estimating a range of about 80 miles so right now as you can see it's gone down to 70 percent and it has dropped in half um so we have a range left of about 43 miles one thing i did notice about this is we got on the freeway started to go uh, basic freeway speeds like 70 75 miles an hour and i just saw the range just going down 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 so yeah, I think a lot of the range is going to depend on how fast you are riding this thing. But a perfect segue to get into top speed. So this thing has, at least on the website, everything, all the facts that I can read, says it has a top speed of about 76 miles an hour. Um, I can tell you that this thing goes a little bit faster than that, and we'll show you guys when we hop on the freeway here in just a minute. But what I did notice, and as I mentioned, the faster you ride this thing, uh, definitely your range goes down pretty significantly. So, 
something to keep that in mind that this is really designed to be like an around town type scooter um, and honestly for around town I think this thing's pretty good so the brakes themselves um, feel touchy uh, kind of weird thing so your right hand right here is going to be your rear brake as much as I can tell and then your left hand is actually not a clutch because this thing doesn't have a transmission per se um, this left is going to be your front brake so that's a trip and definitely pulled that thinking you know when it's coming up to a red light but yeah two two different brake levers here um, has a regular twist throttle same as a motorcycle looks like it has some fancy BMW things that you would expect like a uh, heated grips um, this thing does have a couple different ride modes and then again depending on like what kind of ride mode you're in let's see here <laughs> I mean it's not the most fast thing in the world but it has some get up to it. Um, it it's not nothing so this does have a couple different ride modes to it and again depending on the ride mode that you're in is going to affect your range and the amount of battery so we have this thing in road mode I think there's an eco mode and then a dynamic mode um, but for this ride review we are just going to stay in the road mode because I want to make sure we can make it back to the shop and not have to charge this thing so overall ergonomics of this man we just keep on getting some red lights here overall ergonomics of this thing you are very upright as you would expect in an around town type scooter um, the seat feels plush and positioned you have a little bit of arch support on the back of the seat um, and i'm a bigger guy and so typically you know if if anybody's going to have a problem with a seat on a motorcycle it's going to be somebody like me with my frame and i feel like this is very very comfortable at least for myself this does come with passenger foot pegs on it so if you wanted to take a significant other um thanks ma'am well there you go he's a fan of the electric scooter um anyways like i was saying if you're gonna take a passenger on it i mean technically you could i'd be curious to see what that does i mean if you're adding another 150 pounds or so to this scooter what that does to the range and everything but yeah that's interesting uh you have your basic trip you have info you actually have a pretty nice infotainment system kind of ahead of you right here and that's actually something that i feel like bmw has always done a really good job at they have kind of their modern tft displays on a lot of their motorcycles but definitely the technology that bmw brings to whether it's their motorcycles scooters all of that stuff you feel um the the mirrors on here are gigantic they're huge especially when you know i'm coming from uh bmw gs1250 or you know the s1000 double r or something like that i mean these mirrors you can see things for days i can literally see like three lanes of traffic behind me um they are pretty far forward so if you need to adjust them uh, probably best to do so when you're stopped but yeah mirrors are good um you do have a little uh windscreen fairing in front of you um i will say it doesn't actually block that much wind as we'll see here we're going to get on the freeway uh you basically feel a lot of the wind hitting you on like upper chest neck and then kind of straight on in the face so not sure how much protection that does but i mean i guess it keeps a little bit of the wind off of your lower body here um i am five foot ten and i definitely feel i mean right now i can feel wind yeah on upper upper chest neck area like that so we are going to try and conserve some mileage here and not run out of juice on our way back to Irv Zebra Motorcycles. And again, special shout out to those guys for letting us take this scooter on for kind of a quick review ride, test ride. And, and yeah, I mean, BMW claims on their spec sheets that its top speed is 75, 76 miles an hour. And I'm going to show you here, I mean, we're, we're going 81, 82, 83. Now, I am curious to see if that's the actual speed that we're going, like if we passed uh, something that was measuring our speed limit or not, um, but at least from what I can see based on the speedometer in front of me, it goes a little bit faster. And I mean, I feel like you can go at highway speeds safely, which we are. Um, we're gonna get back over in the slow lane and try and conserve some sort of fuel efficiency or semblance thereof it's not fuel it's electric battery efficiency battery efficiency there you go so 
one of the things um, that I, I noticed that I was actually really surprised about on this scooter bike thing is the weight that it came in. So as you guys know, if you have any experience at all in electric vehicles, you know that batteries are heavy. They really are. I mean, I think some of the Teslas, like the Model 3, are coming in at like 4,000 pounds. Um, and this scooter is no different. So this scooter, even though it is a tiny kind of around town little thing, comes in at a whopping 630 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, that is as much as my GS adventure bike. A uh, full bike rigged for going cross country, off road. This little scooter weighs the exact same. But funny enough, I mean, you don't really feel it. It really feels like it's a pretty well balanced machine. As we'll, we'll come to some stop signs here in a little bit and I'll show you that. I mean, I think you could even do like a no footed stop on this thing. Some of that is gonna be the ergonomics, just how low the scooter sits. Uh, but I mean, we've, we've done a, a little bit of around town kind of maneuverability and stuff like that. And you don't feel like it's this uh, 600 pound kind of monster. The brakes feel pretty responsive. So I don't feel like you need a lot more on the brakes. So, I mean, the question is, is, you know, this, this scooter was launched in 2014, uh, pretty early in the electric game. And then this one is the 2017 model, which still retailed at a whopping $15,000. And we know that as technology progresses, that the price is gonna come down. You're gonna get bumps in efficiency and all of that stuff. Um, there, I don't know. This Okay, this thing says we're going 80 miles an hour right now. I don't think so. I think, you know, it's probably five or six miles an hour off just based on the general traffic flow and how much that work on this freeway. But, I don't know. Okay, so anyways, back when, you know, this, this bike was launched, the question is, was this a good deal? Is it a good deal? I mean, with the way technology improves these days, this thing is pretty much vintage. Um, this thing is, gosh, I mean, from when they first launched this and they didn't do a lot of improvements, uh, this thing is eight years old. In the technology world, uh, it's a dinosaur. And I'll say that while the fuel range is pathetic, pathetic would be a good word. I mean, you can see here, we're down to 30 miles and we're down to 58% battery. And I think we have gone like maybe 20 miles on this thing. Uh, it really is short. So I would say like if, if you need something where you're literally just going around town, uh, you know, maybe to and from work is like max 20 miles. This thing is gonna be perfect. However, for the price, there are a lot cheaper um, gasoline alternatives, but if electric matters to you and you wanna be environmentally friendly, I don't know. Uh, one thing we did do was I went and searched the internet for like what this actual scooter if you tried to buy it right now with 4,000 miles on it. Um, it looks like some people are trying to sell them for around $10,000 still. I don't know. Question like, would I pay $10,000 for a scooter that I had to charge all the time that I don't know the charging speeds of how long this thing takes to recharge, but I can almost guarantee you that it's not super quick. Probably three to four hours if I had to guess. Uh, to charge this thing. It does come with a special BMW charger that sits in a little cubby pocket below your seat. And that is something worth noting that this thing does have a little bit of storage options on it. So um, you do have, you know, kind of the standard scooter storage underneath your seat that I know a lot of Vespas and stuff like that do have, but it is pretty substantial. I mean, I was looking under there, you could definitely fit a full-size helmet and then maybe like a bag of groceries or a backpack or something like that. So I could see this being a pretty, pretty reasonable, um, I don't know, commuter, I guess. If, if you had something, say you live in a major downtown area like New York or Chicago or Dallas or something like that, or even where we're at, and you just wanted to be able to plug something in and not worry about it, I mean, this is a really good solution for that. For anything else, though, I mean, say you wanted to, I don't know, go cruise down PCH and do some miles on this thing. I mean, certainly if the range was better, the, the bike is comfortable enough to do so. You do have a couple different riding positions where you can have your feet kind of flat 
right in front of you or you can kind of extend them out on these little foot guard things so I can see you being comfortable on this um, but I think the range is is really what's going to kill you so it seems like at least from what I've seen say you know if BMW claims an 80 mile range really what that looks like in real time riding is going to be significantly less which makes sense because you know you kind of get the same thing with like fuel efficiency ratings for you know motorcycles that are claiming it gets 50 miles to the gallon or something unless you're riding in eco mode and really just going kind of straight down a highway you're not necessarily going to get those types of ranges so i don't know i certainly like it it's a nice alternative especially when you live in southern california and you have gas at 550 a gallon or whatever it is right now and that's actually a good price believe it or not uh for a while here in socal we were paying upwards of six to seven dollars a gallon for gasoline so i can see where these things uh are getting popular um but one thing i do know is the brand new bmw ce04 scooter which is kind of the, the next iteration of this scooter Let's see if we can zip around some cars um, next iteration of this scooter uh, is significantly cheaper than what this one started at. I believe the base model starts at around $12,000. Um, I will say though, it doesn't look as comfortable as this one is. So definitely this one was um, designed with some ergonomics where maybe the BMW design team wanted to, uh, to design um, the new CEO 4 to be a little bit more modern and edgy so it'll probably do well with a little bit of a younger demographic um, I can see this one has you know maybe a second or a third bike and you just kind of want something a little bit different to go around town if I had this thing at my house like literally if someone gave it to me I wouldn't be mad at all I'd go get groceries on this um, if I had to run to Best Buy for some equipment or something like that I'd take the the C evolution electric scooter out um, but if I was you know gonna go out all day long um, I would be concerned about battery life because okay this is kind of the thing that has got me about kind of the difference between electric and gas is if it were as easy and quick to fill up your electric automobile or bike or something like that as it is to just stop by this gas station real quick pull up put gas in your vehicle and then you know in two minutes you're off on your merry way wouldn't be a big deal however electric is not that at this point i mean mo even like a quick charger station which this thing isn't compatible with quick charging i don't think um you're gonna be sitting there for hours on end waiting to refill and that's if you can find an electric station so i don't know um i am curious to hear your guys's thoughts about this bike we are actually hey funny enough that's my motorcycle so we are here at irv siever bmw picking up my bike it took it in for some service real quick um it needed service i think uh they were doing a brake job or something and then looking at the final drive there might have been a recall on it but it looked like one of the techs that was taking my bike around the block so hopefully it's all done and we can pick it up but yeah uh, kind of what i was saying about the ce c evolution bmw is i mean i wouldn't be mad at all if if i had this thing would i pay ten thousand dollars if i bought it used on the market right now i don't think so i mean i think i would need it to be a little bit cheaper or i would just need it to have a significant amount more range on it but i am excited to hear what you guys think about the electric revolution that is undergoing in the motorcycle industry as always if you guys have liked this video be sure to like the video itself here on youtube subscribe to my channel that does more than you know i want to thank you guys so much for joining me along for the ride on the bmw uh, c evolution motorcycle as thanks always to the guys here at irv siever motorcycle for being so kind to lend this to me for the past couple days it's been a blast but i am interested to hear your guys' thoughts on the electric stuff so please leave a comment down below let's engage let's talk about these things because for better or for worse it really does look like the future of motorcycling is at least going to be in part electric so we'll see thank you guys so much for tuning along till we meet again peace